Hey guys, welcome back. And today we are going to discuss about other nursing diagnosis and care plan. Impaired gas exchange. That's our nursing uh, care plans topic. So let's see how to develop a nursing diagnosis and care plan for this condition. So before that, we will see what is uh, impaired nursing exchange subjective and objective data. So let, like what the patients uh, will say and what you can observe. So impaired gas exchange consists of both subjective and objective observations. Subsequently, uh, subjective data include a patient may complain uh, dyspnea, fatigue, rapid pulse and chest pain. So they can or they will say uh, I have chest pain, I have fatigue, I have rapid pulse or I have breathing difficulty. Objectively or in objective way or what you can observe means here the healthcare provider may observe a sign such as a cyanosis, okay, so increased respiratory rate and decreased heart rate variability. And we will uh, discuss what is impaired gas exchange or who will have the risk of this impaired gas exchange. Patients who are at high risk of nursing diagnosis of impaired gas exchange include elderly individual or older person, person who smokes cigarettes and those with weakened immune system or chronic lung disease. Elderly patients often have age-related physiological variations or alterations which can impair oxygenation. Smokers often have lung damage, which can affect gas exchange and weaken immune system or chronic lung conditions make it more difficult for patients to adequately pull or inhale oxygen into the blood stream. So while coming to the nursing diagnosis, what is the nursing diagnosis or how we can formulate the nursing diagnosis? Impaired gas exchange related to alveolar capillary membrane changes or ventilation perfusion mismatch or in inadequate oxygen supply as evidenced by cyanosis, dyspnea, restlessness or abnormal breath sound. So in one patient, you cannot see all these conditions, guys. So depend upon your patient, you have to develop your nursing diagnosis. So it might be like impaired gas exchange related to uh, inadequate oxygen supply as evidenced by cyanosis, dyspnea, restlessness or abnormal breath sounds like that you have to write. Well, coming to the nursing care plan, you have to follow this format. In the first column, you have to write subjective and objective data in the assessment column, then diagnosis column, then planning, rational, implementation, and at last, evaluation. Evaluation you can see in the last slide. In subjective data, what the patient is saying about their condition. The patient complains that he or she is feeling chest pain and couldn't breathe properly. Objective data that what you have observed. The patient looked very dull, tired and the signs of abnormal vital signs including cyanosis. Well, coming to the diagnosis, impaired gas exchange related to inadequate oxygen supply as evidenced by cyanosis, dyspnea, restlessness, etc. And what is the goal? So I've written two goals here, short-term goal and long-term goal. Short-term goal, the patient will exhibit improved oxygenation or the patient will show or demonstrates improved oxygenation. Long-term goal, the patient will maintain a clear airway and demonstrate effective respiratory pattern. While coming to the planning, always do history collection and physical examination in present tense. For what? To find out hypoxemia and hypocapnia, okay, or I mean decreased oxygen and decreased pulse rate, helps to assess the effectiveness of the intervention. In implementation, you can write done history collection and monitored what you have monitored, a respiratory rate, depth and pattern, and check oxygen saturation every one to two hours. Second planning, assess arterial blood gas or ABG and SpO2. What is that SpO2? oxygen saturation levels for what to get a precise information about gas exchange and acid balance or acid base balance because the patient is having breathing difficulty implementation assist and obtain a bg or at i mean arterial blood gas level and adjusted oxygen delivery based on the results next planning provide proper positioning to the patient it's very very important for what? To enhance ventilation and perfusion. Provided proper position in a semi fowler or high fowler position to improve the lung expansion. So semi fowler or fowler positions will help to uh, improve the lung expansion. Then administer oxygen. For what? To meet oxygenation needs and to improve the oxygen saturation level. Administer oxygen as prescribed, monitored for side effects of oxygen toxicity. 
Next planning, instruct on effective breathing technique for what to control breathing and enhance alveolar ventilation. Instructed and taught the patient to inhale through the nose and exhale slowly through first lips, especially during episodes of dyspnea. Encourage coughing and deep breathing exercise for what to clear the airway and improve alveolar ventilation. Encourage the patients to perform deep breathing and coughing exercise every two hours. And even instructed. Provide emotional support for what to reduce the anxiety. You know, guys, if anxiety is increased, automatically the oxygen consumption also will increase and it, that can worsen dyspnea. Then reassure the patient, explain the interventions clearly and encourage the family involvement to reduce anxiety. That means what you have given provided or you have given or provided emotional support. Then administer medication for what to reduce the symptom. Administered medication depend upon the situation of the patient as prescribed might be bronchodilators or corticosteroids or antibiotics if there is any infection present and that may help to improve the gas exchange. In evaluation, you can read patients maintain the oxygen saturation level with improved arterial blood gas values and the patient demonstrates effective respiratory pattern without dyspnea. So this is the nursing diagnosis and care plan for uh, impaired gas exchange, guys. Hope you understand. Next time, we'll come with other nursing diagnosis and care.